Well, hello there. It's me, Evan Grant, from the Dallas Morning News, with a very casual introduction today. Coming to you live from my hotel room in Philadelphia. Um, and you can tell it's Philadelphia, because right over my shoulder here, that is a, um, it's a portrait of Philadelphia City Hall with William Penn at the very top. Um, Philly's a very underrated city, uh, in my mind. It's been about a decade since I've been here. It's good to be back. I don't know if the city feels that way about me, but I've enjoyed myself here. And I'm coming to you today almost with something optimistic to say, but I'll get to that in a moment. Uh, let's start with the big news of the week, which... And quite frankly, I don't know how big it is if you if you take it on its face value that the Rangers sent down a struggling hitter um, batting 136 to the minor leagues. But when you factor in the name as Willie Calhoun and that he was the key um, return piece in the U Darvish trade, uh, yeah, it's it's significant because the questions then become: Did the Rangers get anything out of the Darvish trade? Uh, is Willie Calhoun's Time with the Rangers running short. Uh, has it been a failed experiment? And all of those questions are uh, are good questions. Um, let's start first with uh, with the return for Darvish, which was which was Calhoun, uh, infielder Brendan Davis, and pitcher AJ Alexi. Davis uh, never got above Double A here in the Rangers organization. Joined the uh, Angels organization. He's at AAA now. He actually performed pretty well there uh, last year. Uh, don't know if he'll ever see the major leagues or not. Uh, but regardless of that, it won't be with the Rangers. Um, Alexi pitched two really good starts last September when he came up. Uh, had three rougher starts at the end. He was not the first guy called up when the Rangers needed a, a rotation uh, um, reinforcement. This season, that was Glenn Otto, uh, who was acquired in the Joe Galli trade. Uh, but Alexi is very much in the pecking order to be uh, a call-up if the Rangers need a, a starting pitcher uh, sometime this year. And so I don't know that you could, that you could say that he, uh, that he wouldn't provide value out of that trade. As for Calhoun... It's been a real struggle here uh, to get a read on Willie um, for a lot of reasons. 2017, 2018 was pretty much out of shape and, and just not a – didn't have a good audition at all. 2019, he, he, he lost about 25 pounds, came to camp, had a good camp, got sent out, didn't handle it well initially, but went down there to AAA, really played well. Got a call up, um, came back up, was really hot, uh, got hurt. Um, it's the itchy face thing again. I'm telling you, man. Every, I guess it must be an anxiety thing. You guys still make me nervous. I make you. I probably make you nervous too. Um, but he came up and and had a solid year for 83 games. He played 83 games in in 2019. That remains the most he's played in the season for the Rangers, uh, and it offered a lot of promise. But then came 2020. Uh, first, he was hit in the face by a Julio Urias uh, fastball in spring training, shattered his jaw, I think left some uh, psychological damage for him against facing left-handers. Then came the, the, the pandemic, uh, which really kind of upended the season. With it, there was... There were certainly, I, I, I think that Willie struggled with the ideas of social justice, um, being a, a black player at that point in time. Um, there was a lot of pressure on guys, uh, and Willie was in a really difficult situation um, in that uh, his father's in law enforcement uh, as, a, as a guard at San Quentin. He's also, uh, he, he's also very aware of the social injustices uh, that, that have taken place on his on his front, and so uh, that tore at him a lot, and I think had something to do with a poor season um, in those sixty games in twenty twenty. Just a lot of stuff going on. Last year, uh, came in, uh, just didn't, never really took off. Last year, uh, spent some time on the IL, 
with a fractured arm when he was hit by yet another pitch. Uh, again, I think consider concerning um, leaving leaving some marks in terms of of how he felt about facing lefties. He was he was open with the Rangers about that, uh, and I think they sought this year to find a way to make him uh, a part-time DH that would allow him to face primarily right-handed pitchers, put him in a position for success. And what they saw was not successful. Um, I think they were frustrated first by uh, a rather quick abandonment of the club philosophy that, that had been approached about swing path and trying to get the ball more in the air than on the ground. Uh, I think then they were they were more than frustrated when Willie didn't score on a ground ball in the ninth inning when the Braves, when I'm sorry, when Houston was uh, surrendering the run. Uh, simple play. And uh, he stayed at third, would have put, put the tying run at third base with one out and given the Rangers a chance to tie that game in the ninth inning. Alas, they did not. And so the club brought up Zach Rex over the weekend. I thought when they brought him up on Saturday, that was a, uh, a real signal that, hey, Willie, your, your situation here is, is not guaranteed. Uh, and then it became clear on Sunday, uh, as I talked to people before the game, that the club was, was very much considering um, the possibility that they would send Willie down, and, and they did that. Uh, and then you get to a situation there where, where Willie Calhoun – on Sunday night, told one reporter um, that he uh, that he struggled with the philosophy that the Rangers had been espousing. Uh, told me the same thing on Monday uh, after having some time to, to kind of process everything, and that I think has really struck a nerve with Rangers management. Uh, Chris Woodward said today, Tuesday in Philadelphia, the first time we've had a chance to talk to him uh, since the um, since the comments from Calhoun that uh, that should never have been made public, and that, quite frankly, if Willie wasn't grasping uh, the Rangers' philosophy, that should have been discussed with the hitting coaches first, uh, giving the impression that, that it was not, uh, and that the hitting philosophy isn't very difficult. It's simply um, more about getting the bat to uh, come up through the, through the strike zone rather than down through the strike zone. And the what the Rangers were seeing from Willie was consistent with what they had seen in the past, which was hard ground balls to the pull side, which are just not getting through for guys anymore, um, partly because of the shifts, which may go away next year. And soft fly balls to the outfield. Just not a recipe for success. And and so they, they made when they had to reduce rosters from 20 to 26. Yes, it was only 44 plate appearances this year. Um, but here's the bottom line, uh, and I think Willie acknowledged this as well. He's been given opportunities. He's been given lots of opportunities. Um, he hasn't seized on them, uh, and his window uh, or his pathway to success has continued to shrink. Um, he struggled to be a what you would call an average defensive outfielder. He's not a great runner. Struggles now against left-handers. So he's a part. Uh, he's a part-time DH against right-handed hitter or against right-handed pitching, which is all fine if you crush right-handed pitching, and he hasn't. Uh, he just has not crushed right-handed pitching, and and so that doesn't leave the Rangers really anywhere to go. So that's a Willie Calhoun story. What, what happens after this, I don't know, but I think Willie is going to have to perform at AAA to get another opportunity with this Rangers team. I think it's very possible with with both Leody Tavares and Bubba Thompson hitting well above 300 at AAA, and both of them offering uh, other assets in terms of defense and speed, that Willie is going to have to prove he's a better hitter and performing better than both of those guys in order to get in order to get a call up the next time one comes for an outfielder. So that'll be an interesting discussion. The Rangers aren't going to trade Willie Calhoun anytime soon. He has no value. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have value. The, I, in some research that I did over the last four years, he's got a negative war 
Uh, and among guys who had had at least 700 plate appearances in that time, uh, it was one of the fourth lowest in all of Major League Baseball. I think it was 268 of 272. So um, the simple answer here is that for Willie to have a path to the big leagues and to success in the big leagues, he's got to hit. That will either give him an opportunity, again, with the Rangers, or it will give him an opportunity to be traded to a club that may need a, a DH uh, where he can go and, 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 tr and try and thrive there. But uh, it all comes down to that. He, he's just simply got a hit, and he hasn't done it at the major league level now for three years. Um, I rambled too long about that, of course. So let's get to a couple other things real quickly. Um, talking about guys who are struggling, uh, Marcus Simeon. Uh, is off to a poor start uh, going into uh, going into May now. He's been a slow starter in the past. I had a true, really slow start with Toronto last year. Um, but I think the difference this year that's got to be at least a little bit concerning, uh, and I don't know that I I consider it necessarily a long term physical issue as much as I still think no matter whether or not guys want to admit this. There's a lot of guys who struggle to live up to contract value after they sign these big contracts. Um, we've seen it before with Rangers. We saw it with Shinsu Chu. Um, I've mentioned this before. We saw it with Alex Rodriguez. The guy said he felt he was under so much pressure when he signed his, his big deal in Texas that the, he went out and tried to steroid himself up. His, his own words. So, We've seen that before, but here's the thing that does concern me a little bit about Simeon is that um, last year you went back and looked at that first month and he was at least still surviving by hitting fastballs. Hit 321 against fastballs in the first month of, of, of the season last year. Nice exit velocity of 92 miles an hour. This year, uh, going into Tuesday night in which he went uh, two for four, um, with a leadoff single uh, to start the game, and then an infield single um, later on. Uh, he was hitting only 116 against fastballs, and the exit velocity was 89. So something's not matching up. Uh, one thing that was pointed out to me today is he is swinging at first pitches a little bit more often. I don't know if that's because um, of the number of at-bats he's getting in the leadoff spot, if he's struggling with the Rangers' idea of wanting to be a little bit more aggressive early on. Uh, but those things are showing up. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks with Simeon and fastballs. That, I think, will be the determining factor about when he gets uh, on track. All right, the other thing very quickly I wanted to talk about, and I'm, this is where I'm going to leave you with something positive. Because that's me, Mr. Sunshine. You know, it's always sunny in Philadelphia, I've heard. Uh, that's a Danny DeVito joke, since people could tell me I look like Danny DeVito. If you see a short, bald, fat guy, that's pretty much who they say I look like. Um, Uncle Fester, is what Elvis Andrews used to call me. Um, the uh, Minions. An Egg. Danny DeVito. There you go. So, um, anyway, here's the thing. What if the Rangers bullpen, which has been much maligned over the first month of the season, actually is turning out to be an asset? Six scoreless innings against Philadelphia on Tuesday. Uh, I'm sorry, six six innings, run, run, a solo home run by Matt, by Matt Bush uh, on Tuesday. Uh, over the last two weeks of the season, which coincidentally enough, Lines up with a meeting that the club had, mostly pitchers, then pitchers and staff uh, in Seattle, uh, which is referenced in, in my, my column uh, in the Wednesday paper and online. Uh, talked about conviction, believing in themselves, just kind of had to get together and say, hey guys, you, you do belong here, now let's execute. Well, since that time, the bullpen uh, over the last... 11 days, has a 167 opponent's batting average, a 1.08 whip, a 2.14 ERA, and, and they've 
their strikeout to walk rate is well above two, 2.26. Um, and they're, they're in the top 10 uh, in baseball in strikeout percentage, which is something that the bullpen really struggled with in, in, in the last year. Uh, so there are some signs here that the bullpen, that guys in the bullpen are developing, um, are settling into roles. Joe Barlow is the closer. Brock Burke is a multi-inning guy. Dennis Santana is a guy to come in to a high leverage runners on base situation like he did today. Got a double play today, tonight, Tuesday, uh, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, and John King is becoming a, a, a go-to lefty. I, I, I still think King is is a little bit erratic, but he's he's gotten out of some situations here that Brett Martin has struggled with early on. So uh, there's been a lot of positive development in the bullpen over the last two weeks. And if, if that bullpen um, is more effective, uh, I, I think you're going to see a much different approach from, from this club going forward. I'm not going to say that they're going to surge or anything, but I, I do think that the, the first week of the season when the bullpen struggled so badly and the starting rotation struggled so badly, I think the offense seized up a little bit, put a lot of pressure on itself, and that led to an offensive bunk. Um, and so it was just a, a cycle. Well, the starting pitching, the bullpen started to level themselves out, took the offense a little while to catch up. It looks like the offense is, is, is getting back on track. Third straight night on Tuesday of scoring in the first inning. Um, third straight win. Uh, maybe this team's getting on a little bit of a roll here. Um, stranger things have happened. So... Until next time, when we'll see if we can keep this just a little bit shorter. So long, everybody.